TIG welding O2 sensor bungs is actually relatively tricky if you don't have everything just right. You're effectively welding a thick piece of metal to a thin piece of metal and that thick piece of metal isn't very big so it gets heated up relatively quickly. Not to mention both of these are cylindrical in shape which means your torque position is changing as you go along. It's pretty tricky but I've got a list of 10 secrets that we've been keeping for a long time that will help you make much much better O2 sensor bung welds. Starting with number one and that is using the right bung. Now if you look carefully you'll notice that there's a bunch of different bungs that are available for you to purchase or to install. The first kind you're going to see is the stepped bung. Now this is actually relatively common but I try to avoid it at all costs. There's a couple of reasons why. If you get the hole diameter just right and it slips in and it fits right where it needs to you're still going to be left with a gap. Now that all depends on the diameter of the tubing that you're using. So if you're using a large diameter like three inch for example here yeah, you're not going to see much of a gap there but that gap will slow you down when you're welding because you're gonna have to either fill it in or work around that, which means you're basically welding two different diameters and the metal can get a little funky that way. If you're using a smaller diameter tube, like this inch and three quarter here, you see that the gap is just monstrosic. This is huge. The smaller step that's been machined into the bung doesn't even go all the way through. So you're gonna be faced with a lot of problems and a big giant gap when it comes to welding it. That's gonna heat up the part tremendously and it's gonna look like crap. The second style you're going to find is the round or straight O2 bung. I generally don't use these at all because one, if you cut the diameter to the same size as the bung, it's hard to hold in place while you're getting a tack weld and it also affects the position of the O2 sensor itself. If your O2 sensor is positioned incorrectly, it may read incorrectly and that's not a good thing. If you choose to just cut a hole and stick it on top, you see that there's a big giant gap that you got to deal with. Big gaps cause slow time, slow time causes more heat, more heat is what effectively destroys your work. The third type that's available is the radius type. This is the style that I shoot for every single time. I do not use anything else. However, I will note that these are in different sizes or different radii. So they're actually machined or radius to fit a certain diameter of tubing. If you use the wrong size, for example, you're going to find that you're gonna have a big old gap to deal with. So if you're going to use a radius style, make sure it's the right size. Now the second thing is cutting the right size hole. It sounds kind of silly, right? But bear with me here. Take a look at this first hole that I cut here. This is a three quarter inch or 19 millimeter. Now if you look very carefully, pretty much all you can see is the threads themselves. This allows the tube to maintain the most surface area, which means it's less likely to blow out when you get too close to that edge. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, take a look at this one that I cut here. It's about seven eighths to an inch, somewhere in that range. It's pretty big. You see how there's a lot more area of the bung exposed? Well, that means that there's a lot less tube to weld it to. And those sections are gonna get really, really hot and they're gonna wanna blow through. So having the correct size hole perfectly set at three quarter or 19 millimeter is exactly what you need. Number three on the list of secrets seems pretty straightforward. Clean your part. A little bit of acetone on a rag, wipe it down on the outside, wipe it down on the inside if you can, especially if you are cleaning an existing piece that has like, you know, exhaust, soot, junk, carbon deposit, anything else on the inside of there. If you can access it, clean it. You need to clean that, otherwise it could get sucked up into your weld and contaminate it. Don't forget to clean the bung as well. A little acetone, a little rag, wipe it down, good to go. Now notice I have a bolt in here. That's secret number four. Using a bolt with a correct size bolt for the bung, in this case an 18 millimeter, it will help you do a lot of things. First and foremost, it will help you locate your hole. Once you slip this through there, it's nearly impossible to screw up because it's automatically located. Even if the threads touch the side of the tube just by a little bit, it's not going to interfere with the installation of an O2 sensor because if the bolt fits, the sensor will fit. Screwing up the location of an O2 sensor is a pretty rookie move. You don't want to do that. I've seen it happen before. People are never happy that you've got to cut it off, damage their stainless, grind it down, whatever the case is. It doesn't look the same even though nobody's going to see it. So make sure you put the bolt through and help it line up. The second thing that it's going to do is act as a heat sink. There's a lot of heat going into this part. So the more you can take away from it, eh, the better off it is. The bolt is a fantastic heat sink for it and they're cheap. So there's no reason not to have one. The third thing it's going to do is going to lead us right into the next thing on the list. Number five, if you're using stainless, purge it. Always, always purge your stainless. The bolt will act as a block off for that bung, as well as serving all of the other functions. It's a win-win. So now we're ready to start welding, and that leads us right into secret number six, which is use smaller diameter wire when welding. 
Now most people would use like 1 16th inch or something around that range, but we're gonna run this at a little bit less amps, which means if we pop that much filler in there, it's gonna kind of build up, cool off, and get kind of clumpy, which makes you move a little bit slower. It doesn't flow. It doesn't have the fluidity that we want it to have. So I usually use 045 diameter wire. Some people even prefer to go all the way down to 035. Both of those are available at wellmetalsonline.com, and if you use the code TFS10 at checkout, you'll save on your order. I also use the stainless steel consumables kit from Weld Metals Online. The kit includes everything you need in order to weld stainless steel. A CK gas lens, a CK wedge collet, CK laser tungsten, and a Furic BBW SG19. This is all you need to weld stainless, titanium, and all the rest of that good stuff. It's available in the regular 920 series, as well as the stubby version for 17, 18, and 26 torches. Best deal you're going to get. So now we move into the welding portion. That brings us to secret number seven. Move quickly through your welds and keep that large cup pumping out the shielding gas. You need to move fast, you need to keep it tight, you need to keep it going, and that cup is pumping about 35 to 40 CFH. It's quite a bit, but you need that gas to stay on there. This includes when you terminate your weld, you keep the torch in place and let that post flow run. It's imperative that the metal that you're welding remains shielded, especially if it's stainless. Now that also coincides with number eight, keep the arc tight and the amps correct. I usually run this about 75 to 80 amps. It really depends on what your style is, what you like and everything else like that, but you definitely don't want to be too low on your amps or too high on your amps. Either one of those is going to cook your part and you definitely don't want to do that. But keeping that arc tight and the amps correct allows you to move quickly through your part. Now since we're basically welding a thick part to a thin part and that thick part has a heat sink in it thanks to the bolt, secret number nine on this list is to focus the arc on the bung more than on the tube. Now, if you look carefully in this shot, it's a slight amount. It's not extreme or anything like that, but the actual arc itself is biased or pointed more at the bung than it is on the tube. Now, number 10 on this list of secrets, my biggest kept secret, count your dabs and stick to that number. Counting your dabs does a couple of things for you. First and foremost, it allows you to maintain the best uniformity. If you have the same amount going all the way around, it looks a lot cleaner. But that's not the only reason that I use it. I count my dabs because it tells me how far I can go before I should stop and reposition. Now, of course, if I get uncomfortable or anything else like that in between, I will stop, I will reposition. But having that small number and that small target goal for each weld really allows me to concentrate, and it does for a lot of other people as well. So count your dabs and stick to it. My number on this one, 15. As soon as I hit 15 dabs, no matter what, I stop, I allow my post flow to run, then I reposition, then I get back in it. So there you have it, 11 of the best kept secrets I have for welding O2 sensor bungs. Follow it to a T and you'll only go up from here.